I got a new swedge block. This is the 50 pound block from Holland Anvils. It was $200 and that included shipping here in the US. No, they aren't sponsoring the video I paid full price for it, but I thought a little swedge block would be handy in this shop. And I don't want to have to go back and forth across the alley between the two shops carrying swedge blocks when we need one. Now, I think this block is a good value for $200, but it's a pretty rough casting and it needs some cleanup. At the very least, all of these corners need to be eased a little bit, just like you would with a new anvil. There's a little bit of flash from the casting that's in these, so there's little razor sharp bits in there, and it's going to leave some really bad marks in your work if you leave it as is. Now how much work you would want to do on a block like this is just up to you. I'd at least remove all those sharp corners, but I'm going to go ahead and clean up the depressions and take some of that kind of pebbly cast finish off of there. Not going to take it to a mirror polish, but I want to make it a little bit better. Now you can probably do a lot of this with hand tools. You can use files, sanding blocks with abrasive paper, and at least get those edges rounded off. You might be able to hand sand the depressions, but it would take a lot of time, and power tools, and a variety of power tools for that matter, are going to make a big difference. And I've got those over in the other shop. So that's what we're going to do. I'll meet you over there. Now this also provides me with a good opportunity to try out a new tool I recently picked up. And that's the Milwaukee M12 right angle die grinder. This is a cordless battery operated die grinder. Instead of having to fire up the air compressor and get out air hoses, for big projects the air compressor is probably still a better way to go and I may use that for this. But I do want to try this tool out. It's almost as light as the pneumatic version, but you're not tethered to an air hose, and it's got variable speeds on it. Looks like 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, or 24,000. I think we're going to start with 10,000. Of course, there will no doubt be some use for the bigger die grinder, an angle grinder, and a band file. Like I say, if you don't have all these tools, you're just going to have to figure out some other way to do it. I don't think I would invest in well over a thousand dollars worth of specialty abrasive tools, not to mention all the consumables I'll go through, just to clean up one swedge block. But these things come in handy for all sorts of jobs of the shop, and I've acquired this collection a little bit slowly over the years. This is the only new one, and it wasn't bought specifically for this project. But first, let me get my safety glasses. I've got this set up with some Rolock discs. That's a quick disconnect system. Just gives about a quarter turn to take that off and put on a new one. And I'm using a curved flap disc. The only place I could find these was at Benchmark Abrasives. So I bought some in various grits.
we'll put some boiled linseed oil in this. That should keep it from rusting. Now you can certainly set a little swedge block like this up on top of your anvil and just kind of balance it there and reposition it as it moves because sooner or later it's going to want to fall off. But you'll be happier if it has a stand. Big swedge blocks I like to set low because I'm frequently using the holes in the side of the block for upsetting purposes. But this little swedge block I think I'd like at the same height as my anvil. Swedge block's three inches thick, anvil is 35 inches tall roughly. So I'm going to cut some 2x12s, 32 inches long, and that will be the base for the stand. And the center I'll leave notched out so we can stand it on edge. I have the saw set for three quarters of an inch and that way I can remove just enough material on both sides of the center for my three inch wide switch block. Should make sense when it's assembled. The pine tar I've been experimenting with on some of the iron work is actually sold as a wood finish. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of that on here just to see how it does. It protects against rot, keeps the stump from absorbing moisture if the ground gets wet in there. And since it's a low spot, it does tend to get wet in there. That's roughly a 50-50 mix of pine tar and linseed oil. Ideally it should be applied warm, but I'm not going to worry about that today. Well, that's a functional swedge block stand, but as you work on this, there's a pretty good chance the swedge block's going to want to shift around, and it might eventually want to fall off. So you might have to reposition this a lot, especially if it's flat up here. It's going to want to dance around a little bit. So I'm going to put an iron band around there. It sticks up about an inch, and that should secure this well enough that it can't slide off. I have some quarter by three inch material that I'm going to use for this. That way I can have two inches down on the wooden part of the stand and still leave an inch up to keep the swedge block from sliding off. My first inclination was just to go ahead and cut four bars to length, MIG weld the corners up, bolt it on, good enough, it would hold this, it would be a perfect solution for this. But because I'm doing a lot of shop improvement videos this summer, I'm not doing as many forging videos, so let's go ahead and forge this band. I'll cut it full length, wrap it around, do a little upset in with a half lap joint to 
join the band together on the end and that should look a little bit better and we get a little bit of a forging exercise out of the deal. So I need to cut my material to length, get some measurements on where I need all my bends to be and I think we'll go ahead and put a forged bevel on the bar just to add to the look a little bit. I'm going to upset the end that will be on the outside of the lap joint. This doesn't serve a functional purpose, it's just there for ornamentation. It makes the whole thing look just a little better. At least I think so. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool now so I can turn it around and work on the other end without having to go to a pair of tongs. Yeah, that stuff's hot. I let this cool so I can lay out where I want my bends to be. If you're going for a nice, crisp 90 degree corner, 
you need to have extra material. It's an upsetting process, so you need to thicken the corner when you bend it. And generally, that's about half the thickness of the material on each side of the bend. So if this is quarter material, you'd need a quarter inch overall, but your center punch mark that you're going to or your layout line, whatever you're working to, needs to be at half the thickness of the material from each end. So if you need 10 inch leg on both sides, you're gonna be 10 and eighth from one side, 10 and eighth from the other side, and that's where your corner goes. Then you upset it till you got 10 inch legs and you should have a nice crisp corner. Now I'm not worried about that nice crisp corner for this, it really doesn't need it, so I'm not adding that much, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of a fudge factor so I can work with it and clean the corners up. Now, I wrote down all my measurements, allowing for an overlap in the center of it for that lap joint, and I'm gonna get this laid out, mark it with a soapstone, then I'm gonna heat these with a torch because I think that's the best way to go. And it can stand just a little bit of cleanup at the anvil. Now it's on to the bends. I'll put a little tack weld on the inside of this so it stays where I want it to. Then I can drill and put some rivets in for the permanent connection.
I figure since we put pine tar on the block, we might as well put pine tar on the iron band as well. Well, that gives us a nice swedge block stand. It is loose fitting in here, but that's really intentional. Holland Anvils makes three swedge blocks in this kind of general size range, and this is sized to fit the largest of the three. So if I decide to collect the whole set, it should still fit in this stand. If this becomes a problem with this smaller block, then it starts to just slide around too much and it gets annoying. I can cut some strips of wood to put inside the band and corral it a little bit better. Put some holes in those, hang on a nail in the wall when I put one of the other blocks in there. And it should be a good versatile stand. It allows the block to sit flat to use any of the features of the block at the flat. And I can stand it up on edge so that I can work in any of the edge profiles. This may be a little bit low here. I may want to bump that up just a little bit, put some sort of a spacer in there, but we'll see. Now one advantage to making it a little bit taller would be that I could actually use this as a stock rest while I'm working at the anvil. So I might do that, and the different depressions will really help corral material. Just move the swedge block stand to wherever I need the stock rest, and that might eliminate one extra tool taking up floor space in this little shop. Now I don't necessarily recommend taking a swedge block to the level I took this, and of course I didn't take this to a full polish. If you're doing really fine copper work or using this for silver work or something, you probably do need to completely polish all the depressions. But for general blacksmithing, that rough pebbly texture probably isn't going to hurt you anything. And the important thing is to just take the sharp edges off of the edge of the depressions and the edge of the profiles along the, the perimeter of the block so you're not leaving gouge marks in your work. You can do most of that with a file, hand sandpaper, an angle grinder, lots of things you can use for that. I wouldn't go out and buy $1,000 worth of tools to improve a $200 swedge block. But if you have the tools already and you want to take it to this level, by all means, go right ahead. It's your tool. Do whatever you want with. I just wanted to see what it would take. And it wasn't really all that hard to clean up the swedge block. It took more time waiting for different shape abrasives to show up so I could get into all the depressions evenly. And I will try to link to some of those products, those different consumable abrasives, down in the video description, as well as a link for Holland Anvil Swedge Block. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. The link for the Swedge Block is not an affiliate link or anything, although I will try to find affiliate links for the abrasives. And if you're interested in some of the tools I was using to do that, those will probably be affiliate links too. Affiliate links don't cost you any extra, but I get a little bit of a commission out of the deal, and that helps support the channel and helps fund future progress here in this little shop. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.